Hello everyone, welcome back to Code Beto. In this video, we are going to attempt to create our own Git project from zero. So have you ever wondered how Git works? Uh, I'm assuming you are familiar with Git. And if you are not familiar with Git, you should be familiar if you are a software engineer that is actually watching this video. I would assume that you are already familiar with Git. But for those who don't know what is Git, it's a version control system that allows you to manage uh, the versions of your project, right? So for example, Git allows us to work in the same code base uh, or multiple engineers to work in the same code base in an organized manner. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. But, but honestly, we as a software engineers, we don't really understand. Well, the majority of software engineers, we don't really understand how Git works under the hood, right? How the branching works, how all the data of the code is being actually organized and maintained um, you know, so that we can actually merge code, push code. So that's why actually in this video, we're going to be using this amazing website called crafters.io. They actually reached out to me and they uh, talked a little bit about cra uh, code crafters.io, which is actually a really cool company uh, and a startup that is actually backed by YC, uh, Y Combinator, if you didn't know. Um, they are actually uh, backing this project, which is really nice. Uh, you can check it out yourself if you want. There's actually a link down here if you want to go and create an account. So CodeCrafters.io basically provides exercises for mostly senior engineers. Uh, but I would say that if you are a simple software engineer as I am, uh, I would say that uh, using CodeCrafters.io and actually doing some of the challenges that they have, it's going to uh, allow you to become more senior and actually understand the basics of how things work, right? So for example, in today's video, we're going to be attempting to create the Git, uh, the Git challenge, but they have actually a lot of challenges and it's actually pretty, pretty cool how we do this challenge with them because they have this uh, CLI that is going to allow us to um, actually build these projects or these challenges step by step. And, and you're going to learn more in a moment, but actually let's just scroll down because I want to talk a little bit about the team behind CodeCrafters.io and the people this, that is actually teaching us or it's actually creating these challenges, uh, which are people from Next.js, uh, Docker, Mighty, and Shopify. And there's actually uh, more engineers behind this. As you can see, I mean, very, very experienced or very, very senior engineers that are creating these kind of challenges. And I believe, um, I truly believe that by doing some of these challenges, you're going to become a better software engineer. And CodeCrafters.io uh, were actually kind enough to provide me with a link for you guys um, so that you can create your account to, to follow along with me in this video. And actually, if you decide to get access to the VIP, uh, you're going to get 40% off by using my link. So pretty good deal for you guys. Another thing about code crafters guys is that actually a uh, software engineers that are working on the big tech companies are using code crafters to sharp their skills, to actually learn the low level stuff to become a better software engineer. And as you can see, engineers from Microsoft, Stripe, Apple, Docker, they have left some reviews here, which I, which is pretty nice. All right, so let's actually dive into the challenges. I have the catalog here that we can see. And actually, the, the, there are some pretty interesting challenges, but I would say, guys, that you would need to take some time to actually uh, go deep into these uh, um, challenges, right? Because, for example, if you are like me, that you don't really know how everything works under the hood, or I don't have a lot of experience with, you know, maybe Redis or Docker, you would need to actually read a little bit about these tools and then move on. Uh, or the, the easiest way to, to actually get the challenge done is, is looking at the solution, which you can do. Uh, well, not solution, but some examples that are going to help you solve the, the challenge. But in today's video, we're going to try to do the build your own Git challenge that we have here. And another cool thing that I was forgetting to mention is that uh, you can do these challenges in any language, which is pretty nice. And actually, if you want to learn a new language or you are trying to learn, to learn a new language like me, for example, I'm trying to learn Java, uh, I can actually attempt to do these challenges in Java. Another plus there. But in today's video, <laughs> I don't want you guys to, to watch me in pain learning Java. I'm, I'm going to do the challenge in JavaScript. I also wanted to mention, guys, that if you don't want to pay for this, you may want to check out with your company. Maybe they want to sponsor this for you which would be pretty nice so that you can build a pretty good skill set 
uh, and for free, right? So you can get your company to pay for this. But anyways, let's actually jump into the Git repo or challenge that we have here. And you can see that we have this description, you know, it tells you a little bit about the challenge along the way you learn about Git directory as well, objects, blobs, commits, traits, etc. Right. So this is very interesting to me actually, uh, because I, I have no idea how Git works in early hood. So this is going to be pretty interesting. Let's actually go ahead and click on start. And this is the screen that you should be looking at. Um, let me make this a little bigger so that you can see. Now, this is going to be pretty fun, guys, because they have a CLI tool that we can actually utilize to get started, right? So, and then another thing that I want to mention is that I probably won't be able to finish all this because, you know, it's it's a lot of stuff that we actually want need to learn if we really want to uh, master Git and, and learn about the functionality of Git. All right, so let's get started. Um, welcome to building your own Git challenge, right? In this challenge, you will build a Git implementation that can initialize a repository, create commits, and clone a re uh, public repo. All right, so let's select the language that we want to use. In this case, like I mentioned before, I want to use JavaScript uh, because it's the language that I'm more familiar with. And they actually are going to ask you if you um, are a beginner on this language so I feel like I'm an advance. Now, um, it, actually, this is pretty nice because it, um, based on your knowledge of this language, they are actually going to provide more uh, help, I would say, right? So let's go ahead and click next question. And we just like once a week, just for now. Um, accountability, uh, yes, please. No, I'll pass for now. You can select yes, right? Now here, guys, um, the first step, as you can see, now we are in the second step here. The first thing that we need to do is actually clone this repo. So I'm going to copy here and I'm going to move this to the left. Alrighty, guys, so I have my terminal here. So I'm going to clone this repo just by pasting uh, this command. All right, and now I'm inside this uh, folder. Now they are asking me to push an empty commit. Uh, to create a connection, right? So let's go ahead and copy that and hit enter. All right, and as you can see, we are connected to the Code Crafters uh, CLI, uh, and they are actually listening for uh, changes that we create to this repo. So this is pretty cool, right? Now let's actually go ahead and open this on VS Code. So I'm going to say code dot and hit continue. All right, now if you pay attention, we are in the third step here, initialize the Git directory. And here's where the challenge starts to, um, to become more complicated. <laughs> so let's go ahead and make this bigger. All right, so here we have the repo that we cloned. And as you can see, this is the starter uh, project. And because we, use, we choose JavaScript, we have this main JS, which actually comes with some code already to get started, right? Uh, we have some stuff here, YAML file, readme, and this script, your Git. All right, so pretty, pretty basic at the moment. Let's go ahead and actually check what we have here. I'm going to move this to the left. All right, then this is how it looks. Now, um, we are using Node for this project, right? So we're going to be using the file system, as you can see here, and as well, path. Now, this is a pretty good point to actually stop if you are not familiar with these FS or file system um, features that we actually have access with Node in JavaScript. Um, and yeah, so here we have, you know, some, some logs that we can actually see in the terminal when we make some changes. Now, if you pay attention, when we run, if you go back to the terminal, we actually have some test fail here, and this is expected. As you can see here, your, your first push is going to have, uh, should stream back a test fail error. Uh, the reason for that is because, uh, once you implement this stage, you'll pass the test. All right. So check the how to pass this test section if you uh, want to below our instructions of how to pass this stage. So this is the fun part. Let's actually make this a little bigger. Um, in this stage, you'll implement the git init command, right? We, uh, we all have used this git init, right? When we start a new repo. Um, and this command initializes a repository by creating a .git directory and some files inside it, all right? You can read more about what's inside the Git directory here. So let's actually click this link. 
And this is a pretty cool thing that I really like about code crafters is that they give you the resources that actually you need to learn or read to actually learn what's going on, right? And if you and if you have the time, if you want to really put the time, I would encourage you to read this section. It's pretty interesting. Um, basically tells you how um, Git works, right? When we create a new you know, repo, we have this Git directory. And have you ever checked uh, what's inside this Git directory? Well, it's, it's pretty interesting. We have a lot of stuff going on here. We have some hooks, description, branches, uh, the head, fetch head, and inside hooks, we have more stuff, index, logs. And if you want to learn more what's every single thing, let's start with commit edit message, which basically is the last commit message. It's not actually used by Git at all, but it's there mostly for your reference after you made a commit, right? Pretty interesting, right? Then we also have config contains settings for this repository. Specific configuration variables can be dumped in here. Uh, and even aliases, which is nice. What, is, um, what these files is most used for is defining where remotes uh, live and some core settings such as if your repository is bare or not. So pretty interesting. I didn't know anything about this. Let's go back to VS Code. And as you can see, we don't have a Git repo here. Um, and I think that's because I need to open that on my Explorer. So I'm going to say actually open dot. And if I open my Explorer here, you can see that uh, in this project that we actually are working on, we are not seeing this dot git folder, but it, it is there because we have a repo. Uh, and actually we can see that we are on the master branch here. All right. So let's go ahead and actually open this folder. And you're going to find everything, every single thing that we have here, but in real life, right? <laughs> So if we put this like in a list, uh, we can see actually better the commit edit messages, uh, the config description, and you can actually open this on VS Code if you really want to check it out. Uh, let's go ahead and drag and drop description. All right, and this is the description, right? So at this point, guys, I mean, we are learning a lot about Git, what's going on inside Git, uh, what, at least what the structure, right, of, of the .git folder. Now the ref, it's master, as you can see here, it's 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 true. <laughs> and if we go back here, we also have some hooks, which I don't know what it what it is, uh, but we have, you know, a lot of files here. And then we also have some info. Let's go ahead and drag and drop this. All right, I guess this is just like what to exclude from the git. Exclude, uh, we can have exclude patterns, as you can see here, uncomment them if you want to use them. All right, so pretty, pretty cool. So let's close this and you can keep, you know, exploring these guys if you if you really want to. But the challenge is actually to create um, this folder whenever we run the command in it, right? So let's go back to the challenge. And um, so in this stage, we need to implement the git in it. So pretty interesting. Uh, our program should be able to handle this command. And whenever the user or the developer runs this command, we should be able to initialize this .git directory uh, and some files inside it. So you can read more about this here, as you can see. And for the purpose of this challenge, you only need to create the very minimum required for Git to function properly. So we don't need to create uh, you know, the entire list of, um, you know, uh, files that we have here. Instead, we just need to create uh, the objects folder, the refs folder and the head, right? And this should contain the reference to master, which is pretty, uh, which is what we have here. If, and if I drag and drop it, you can see that we need to create actually this. So if we actually check out the code here, um, let me close this. You can see that we have a, a some code that it's already here. We can actually make some logs here. Maybe we can put an emoji here. Let's actually discomment this, uncomment this, sorry. Now in this case, um, we are grabbing this command from the process.arguments uh, version two. 
Now, this is a moment to stop as well and actually see what's going on, right? Because this is, you know, this is a syntax that we as a front end engineers or me as a front end engineer, I've never used. I don't really use Node uh, in a low level or in a command handle manner or creating folders with Node. I just run npm install and that's it, right? So it's it's pretty nice to see that we can actually grab this uh, process variable that it that it's just available because we are using Node, and then we can access the arc b. So this process arc b properly returns an array containing the command line arguments passed when the Node.js process was launched. So this is pretty nice, right? So for example, if I run my main.js and then pass like, for example, argument or a flag, and this is pretty, and we usually use this, for example, if we run npm install and then say force, this would be like the the parameter, right? The force, the command. Um, and then you can see that the first element will be execute path. And you can learn more about this if we click it. Um, returns the absolute path name of the executable that started the Node.js process. Pretty interesting so far. And uh, this is the first argument, right? Um, if needed, the second element will be the path to the JavaScript file executed. Okay. And the remaining elements will be the additional command line arguments. So for example, assuming the following script process, um, process arguments of JS, then we grab these arguments and then we can iterate over this array and put them in the console. All right. So if you pass these one, two, three, four, this is the result that you're going to get. Now, if you pay attention at position two, we have actually the command that we pass here or, or the argument. So one is going to be in position two and then so on. This is an array that can contain um, a lot of, you know, you know, variables that we can pass or flags. Cool. So that's why we're grabbing position two, I guess, right? So if I run my command, I can grab it here. And if I say git init, init, we know that we need to actually generate a git directory, which is a challenge, and then break. And then we also have a default case, um, in this case, unknown command, which is pretty nice, right? Handling every single case. Now let's actually check this function that we have here, which, which is creating um, the directory. Now this is another cool, cool, very cool stuff. We're actually using FS, which is um, the file system that we can access using Node, right? So we have this make directory sync method that is synchronously creating a directory now returns on the find or if recursive is true, the directory path created. So now this is going to take the path or actually the name of the folder, right? And then some options. And we're passing recursive equal to true. Now, if I hover again here, you can see that if recursive is true, the first directory path created. So it's going to return the first um, directory path created. And this is the synchronous version of main directory. So if you say that this is recursive, it means that you want to actually create um, folders or more files inside this folder. Cool. So if I hover here in the case, whether parents folder should be created. If a folder was created, the path to the first created folder will be returned. Okay, good enough. Now then, um, remember, guys, we have to create the git folder, which is what we are doing here. Inside the git folder, we are creating another folder for objects. And then inside uh, the git folder, we are creating the refs folder as well. And finally, we need to create a file, not a folder. So this file is going to be the head, uh, which we can take a look here. This is how it looks. And we actually uh, saw it before, but I'm going to drag and drop it again so that we see what, what actually we're doing here. So let's go um, back to the main JS. Let's put this to the right. Uh, and what we are doing here is basically using write file sync. Uh, and this is going to create this head. 
So if I, um, if we pay attention here, basically we're passing the path, which is going to be inside the Git. Then the, the file name is going to be head and the content of this file, as you can see here, file, it's the first parameter. The second one is going to be the actual data or the content of this file, which is a string, right? And then we can also pass some options, but in this case, we are just passing the content. So this is how it looks. Now, uh, you may wondering, you may be wondering why we have this slash n. Basically, that is like uh, an end of line. All right. So it's like, it's like we have the same here, but in this case, we have an enter. That's why we have this second line here, right? So I'm going to close these now for now. Um, and yeah, so uh, console log just so that we know what's going on and that this worked. Uh, let's go back here. Now, how to pass this stage? Since this is your first stage, we have included commented code, which is pretty nice. I like to have the code. I think I can learn more about uh, about this just by looking at the code and checking the documentation. And then we need to uncomment, which is what we did. Finally, we need to add and push. All right, so let's go ahead and copy this and let's open the terminal and paste this, hit enter. All right, we have the, the code crafters title here. Uh, then we have um, the test passed, which is the stage ones. Um, so this is pretty cool being able to check out if my code is actually working based on the requirements that they gave us. Um, it's pretty cool because we do that. We can do that in real time. Now, if you pay attention, these are my logs. So I added this emoji, uh, up here, as you can see. Um, so this is working just fine. Initialize Git directory. And I think we can do, uh, more complicated things like, I mean, not more complicated things, but for example, putting the console more, more information, more, you know, more interesting. Like for example, we can say console log, um, command received equal to comment, right? Right. And let's, we can push this again, I guess. And we should be able to see that this break. All right, because at this point we are in stage two, but uh, we can see the logs from the previous command, which is command received in it. All right, pretty nice. We are actually seeing what's going on. So they run our program with the init parameter. All right, so let's go back here. We pass this, as you can see here, and now we can move on to the next one. So I'm going to hit read a block object. So this is getting pretty interesting at this point. Um, so let's, let's read this together. In this challenge, we'll deal with three Git objects, blobs, threads, and commits. All right. So this is getting interesting. Now this is medium. Let's click on Git objects. Cool. So I can come here and actually learn what is a Git object, right? So Git internals. So Git object is going to be a content addressable file system. Great. What does that mean? It means that at the core of Git is a simple key value data store. Hmm. Interesting. So what this means is that you can insert any kind of content into a Git repo. All right. So we can insert images, I guess we can insert PDFs. We can insert any file. So for which Git will hand your back a unique key you can use later to retrieve that content. Oh, wow. This is very, very interesting. As a demonstration, let's look at the plumbing command, git hash object. We take some data stores in your dot git objects. All right. So inside the objects, we're going to have the data, right? Cool. Now, and gives you back the unique key so that we can use that key to access that data later on. First, you initialize your git repository by uh, verifying that there is a predictably nothing in the objects directory. All right. So they are just in initializing a new Git repo. Um, and then checking what we have inside the objects. All right. So we have an objects directory. Interesting. Um, no regular files. So let's use Git hash object to create new data object and manually store it in your new Git database. 
oh wow so this is a, a pretty pretty good thing to pretty good way to think about the object folder right it's like a database key value um, key, key value data structure cool so in this sample we are using git hash object we take the content you handed to it and um, memorably return the unique key that will be used to store int in your git database all right all right let's keep scrolling down so if we find inside objects you can see that now we would have this id right so if you again exam, exam, examine uh, the objects directory you can see that it now contains a file that new content um, for that new content this is how git stores the content initially as a single file per piece of content named with a sha or sha1 checksum of the content and its header. Hmm, interesting. The subdirectory is named with the first two characters of the SHA, which is, I guess, these two, right? All right, and, and the file name is the remaining 38 characters, which is these 38 characters. Once you have content in your object database, you can examine that content with the git cat file command. So this command is sort of a Swiss army knife <laughs> for inspecting git objects. Passing p to cat file instructs the command to first configure out the type of content, then display it appropriately. Okay, so that's interesting. So if you pass the black p, I guess we are saying we are basically telling telling you know figure out what is the type of content and then display it appropriately. So this is cool. So let's try to do this on the um, on the project that we have here. I'm going to clear the terminal and let's run this. All right, and we have a lot of objects for this actually real project. So let's go ahead and um, copy this one. Now we don't need the ID, so I can copy this one, the first one that we have here and paste it here all right uh, let's go back what did i do wrong aha uh -huh, d6 all right so yeah i needed these two uh all right so if i add the six six here all right so look at these guys we have uh the information okay so this is i guess what we have right so this is pretty, pretty cool, pretty interesting. Let's try to do the same with older ID, like for example, the last one. Uh, um, let's copy, I guess we can copy all this and then come back and delete the slash, this one. Hit enter. All right, so we have the same thing. Honestly, I don't know what's going on here, but um, this is pretty cool. So let's go back to the documentation. Now, um, as you can see, guys, you can add, you know, more content by running these commands. You can add write a test.tx, tx, right, or text. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't want to read the entire documentation right now with you guys here watching me. Um, but, you know, just, I mean, so far, I just want to say that this is very interesting and I'm learning a lot. And this is just one challenge that Code Crafters offers. And I think that you are going to learn a lot by trying to solve these challenges. Um, so this is why I really bring this to the channel, guys. I, I really think that Code Crafters is going to help you. Um, and of course, we have this, this pretty cool promotion that if you use my link, you're going to get a pretty nice discount. Uh, and also remember that you may want to try to get your company to pay for it so that you don't have to pay for it. Okay, nice. So let's keep moving on here. We already saw a little bit about blobs, traits, commits. Uh, and actually, we can come back here and you can see that we have the trees. Um, yeah, so you can go on back here and read about traits, trees. Um, but yeah, I don't want to, like, like I mentioned before, I want to, you know, waste your time, guys. I want you to go actually go at your own pace and enjoy reading um, as I did. Okay, cool. So now let's start with blobs, which represents files, binary data, or 
Uh, blobs actually means uh, large binary objects, um, to be precise. In this stage, you'll read a blob from your Git repo by fetching its contents from Git objects directory. All right, so we have a pretty good idea of what we need to do. Just read whatever we have inside this folder. You'll do this using the first multiple plumbing commands. All right, so if you come back here, you can actually um, you can actually learn about the plumbing and the porcelain commands. Okay, so let's go back here. Well, we encounter in this challenge. Okay, git cat file. All right, so if we go back here and actually scroll up, um, this is the command that we were using back here, right? To actually, to actually read that data or get that data. Uh, remember that this is at the end of the day, like a database with a key value pair data structure. Uh, so that we're gonna be using this command and you have the entire documentation that we can use here. And actually guys, I would encourage you to just read, read this documentation, enjoy it, and then come back here and, um, and look at the code examples that they have, right? And we are going to do that in a moment. But for now, I just want to say that um, this is how the program is going to be called. So, so basically, they are going to call our uh, program. They are going to pass this cat file parameter. They are going to pass the P. If you remember, P basically is to figure out what's the um, figure out what the type of content to and then display it appropriately. Okay. So this is what we basically we need to do in our implementation, right? And then we're going to receive the blob SHA, which is what I did here. Basically, this is the command that we need to handle in our program, right? So it is expected to print out the binary data that the blob contains, okay? In many programming languages, the default print function would be this one. Uh, we'll append a new line to the output, blah, blah, blah. Keep in mind that Git uses zlib to compress objects. Okay, so this is very interesting. Many languages have utils for dealing with zlib data in their standard libraries. If not, you may need to use a third party library to read these compressed files. Okay, so keep in mind that these files are compressed. So I think we're going to need this library. So if I click on zlib, you can actually learn more on Wikipedia, right? Now, at this point, we can actually start trying to solving this. Uh, now we also have this how to pass this stage, which is pretty nice. Uh, in this case, of course, we don't have any code. Uh, we actually need to read the documentation. And once you read the documentation, we need to implement the solution. Uh, and they recommend taking a look at the code example tab, which contains code examples from all their users. Okay, so it's not from them. Uh, commit and push your changes. All right, so let's try to do this. We know that we're going to get this command. All right, let me scroll down. All right, so I guess the easiest way to continue here would be to create another case. And the case is going to be this command here. All right. So I want to handle the cat file. Uh, and for this, I guess what I can do here is just say console log. And uh, I guess I can move this command uh, uh, outside the switch case. All right. So that I, I don't have to write it here again. Um, but in this case, I would need to, um, you know, put in the console, the data. And I also need to grab this, this blob SHA, right? So let's actually go ahead and look at the code examples. Okay. So here we have some examples using JavaScript as well, which is pretty nice. And we also have this drop down to choose the language that you want to use or you want to learn. So let's go ahead and check out the first one. Um, expand this example. Now, as you can see, they are using this library. All right. So that means that we need to use it as well. Um, I don't know how can I install it though? 
All right, so they are doing what I did, handling the cat file command. Now let's see, how can I use this library? Can I just import it? Okay. And it, it seems that it's working. Um, so it's a node library, I guess. Models provides compression functionality implementing using gzip defined. Okay, so just by requiring, we are able to use it, which is pretty nice. All right, so now um, we actually need to create this function to handle the cat file. So I can maybe just copy these two lines here. And uh, yeah, so we need to implement this cat file function. And what I can do is, I guess, just create this function down here, cat file. Now let's go ahead and check out why, what they did in this function. Um, I'm going to expand this. Okay, so it's creating directory. And this is going to be an async function, which makes sense where we want to wait for the data to be uh, actually, you know, decompressed. Um, okay, let's go ahead and copy this and then try to analyze it. Okay, paste it here. Uh, of course, we are going to get arguments, right? Actually, maybe I can delete my, my name, all right? This is an async function called cat file, which is going to be called with this uh, arg. Okay, so the arguments. Now remember guys, the arguments is going to be an array. Um, and we also saw the position of these, um, of these arguments, right? And we can put them in the console, I guess, which would be fun. I'm gonna say console log arguments. And maybe we can say, arguments all right and then we can actually see the array um, all right so what we are doing here is grabbing the sha which is going to be at position minus one which um, i'm guessing this is going to be the last element right that's why we have minus one then object folder it's going to be uh, at position zero and then position one so we are concatenating um i guess we are concatenating the the entire um i guess we are concatenating like the folder uh object file is going to be equal to object dot slice so we are grabbing uh from position two in advance right so from from position two and at all the way till the end then we're grabbing uh the compressed file content so we are using the read file function from the file system. And this is going to return the contents of the path. All right, then we need to pass the path, which is going to be inside directories, inside objects, passing the object folder, and then passing the object file, which is the SHA, all right? Cool. So then we need to uncompress using the C library and then inflate sync. So decompress a chunk of data with inflate. And then we pass the data, of course, as parameter, header end is going to be uncompressed file content to a string index of. So I'm not sure what actually this is doing. Um, so this is decoding the buffer to string accordingly to the specific, specified character encoding. All right, all right. Not sure if I understand. Why do I have a one here? I'm going to delete this. Hit save, okay. And then um, if you remember, we need to put this in the console, right? So that's why we are doing this process dot out dot write. So basically this program, it's going to put the results like this one right here. Uh, once this is, um, I mean, actually to the user that, right? So the user is going to see the results. So that's what we're using the process STD out. Nice. And then we are actually passing what we want to, um, to put here to string, passing the uh, encoding, which is UTF-8, slicing header end plus one. Not sure why, uh, but let's go ahead and try to send this. Let's go back to the instructions. Now this is a pretty good step guys to, to actually stop and try to learn why we're using these commands, right? So let's go ahead and uh, 
clear the terminal again and send this. Okay, already guys, now this is failing. Um, expected jikes, jikes, vanilla, vanilla, don't be had as STDL got logs from your program will appear here. All right, receive cat arguments. So we basically are not outputting the result of this uh, program, right? And if you pay attention, we actually have the result here, but we are returning, you know, the entire string here. So something is something is wrong, I guess. Uh, and then a uh, cool thing to notice here is that we actually have the arguments that we are getting. So this is basically the array that we are handling up here. This one right here. So object sha would be at position minus one. And if we open this, this is going to be the sha, right? Then object sha plus object sha one, which is this directory. Basically, we are concatenating these two um, strings for the object folder. And then object file is going to be at position two from position two and all the way till the end, right? Because we are slicing. All right, so let's go back here and actually check maybe another example. Let's see this one. So this guy is actually approaching this in a different manner and checking if the argument is different than P, throw an error. So it's good to have this validation, I guess. <clears throat> and then it's passing um, the arguments at position four. Interesting. And then here he's um, using this directory to slice, get the first two characters, which is pretty nice. He actually has these uh, comments. Cool. So actually, let's let's try to let's try to use this one. And this is not a an async function, which is interesting. I'm going to delete this, and then um, we are passing the hash at this point as parameter. All right, and then we are validating here. So let's go ahead and try to do that as well. Um, let's paste this here. All right, it's safe. All right. So this looks good. Let's try to push this again. All right, and it's not working. Alrighty guys, so something funny is happening here because we are actually outputting the right answer, which is expected here. But um, somehow um, it's testing with this answer, which is um, logs from your program. So I guess here I can delete this then appear here come on received all right all right so i guess that's the error let's try and run this again okay okay my bad so the error was that i was printing something else and that was being the output um and the and they were checking that right cool very interesting so we passed these two tests as you can see here pretty cool now let's actually try to really understand the, the answer, which, well, well, we're just validating that if we are not passing the flag P, we're just going to throw an error, which is pretty nice. Actually, in, in real life, if you are getting this kind of feedback when you're using the CLI, it's pretty nice, right? So let's go down here. Then we are grabbing the hash, slicing it. First two characters are the directory. Okay. Then we grab the file. The rest is the file name. So that's why we are doing this slice. Then we join them uh, to grab the path and pass it to the read file. Once we have the, the, the data, we need to um, decode it with zlib, right? Z library, passing the data, and that's the response. So the, the response is being converted to a string uh, accordingly to I mean, decoding it with with two string and then splitting it and grabbing the position one. So this is going to return an array, I guess. Already, 
cool, pretty nice. Now let's go back here. Let's actually go to the instructions and this is complete as you can see here. Cool, very nice. We were able to complete it. Um, and then we can move on. We can actually provide some feedback. All right, so I, I guess this is a pretty good point to stop this video, guys. Um, as you can see, we learned a lot just by copy pasting some code and reading the documentation that they gave us. I would highly encourage you guys to actually go through these challenges yourself. Uh, enjoy, take your time, enjoy reading the documentation and actually try to come up with a solution. I think you're going to get to the next level. Don't forget to use my link down here to get a 40% off if you decide to get to become a VIP, but also you can try it for free uh, using my link as well. So I hope you like this video, guys. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.